For those of you that are thinking that tonight's going to be another big ticket guest like a Billy Walker or somebody, Sunday nights are not about that. Hello whiskey folk, yes, hello everybody. Welcome to another Sunday night extended opening of the VPUB as I said in the intro there. Tonight is not about guests, it's not about agendas, it's not about themes or structure, it's just me tonight. And we'll bring in a few guys to play a wee game of It's a Space Aid and things, but it's just a kind of a more relaxed VPUB. I hope you enjoyed Thursday night. It was absolutely fantastic for me. I've gone back and watched and listened to Billy's words again and I realised that you know, we could have easily gone another hour, twice as long, even more talking about the things that Billy was sharing with us. I felt that the insight, I felt the openness, the candidness, um, the the things that, that we discussed and how he was speaking about it was an absolute treat. It's very, very difficult to find uh, guests in the industry that will be as endearing and as honest and open as Billy. Uh, and I thank him again for spending time with us on Thursday. One of most, my most comfortable and enjoyable uh, VPUBs. I hope you enjoyed it as well. The great thing about it is it's available there for everybody co to go back and see and hear about uh, Billy Walker's thoughts on whiskey and where he's intending to take Glen Allachy in the future. But welcome to all of you guys. Welcome to a Sunday night uh, extended opening where we just relax a little bit. This format is much more kind of laid back, as much interaction with you guys as, as I can possibly do. Um, and ask me anything type format, sure. Uh, just general chat and things about what's going on in whiskey. Um, these are really, really, really busy times. And a lot of us are really grateful that we've got whiskey there in the background as our hobby or our interest to keep us sane. That's certainly how I feel. And you guys are doing a very good job twice a week of helping to keep me saying thank you very much. I'll jump into the chat and I'll welcome some of you guys, you wonderful whiskey folk, you dedicated barflies. Let's see who we've got, look who's shouting to get my attention tonight. We've got Graham Fraser, you star, always great to see you, my friend. Uh, Luke Gixer Skipper, just saw a painting by your dad on before we went live on the Aquavite Barflies group. He done, painted a picture of Lagavulin. I need a closer look at it, it looked fantastic. Um, and I also saw a contribution from you on Instagram as well. Obviously, you're a, a, a skipper. You are actually out there on the sea, perhaps piloting boats. But that looked quite dramatic, your Instagram post. Nice to see you in, Luke. I hope you're doing well. I hope you've got a wee weekend off. Uh, Budget Drams is here saying, hi, Roy. Evening, everyone. Hope we're all well. Uh, I wasn't able to celebrate World Whiskey Day yesterday, so I'm celebrating now with a Bamore 12. Slancha. Slancha, my friend, I did celebrate World Whiskey Day yesterday, but I did it in a much quieter way than usual. Um, we'll talk more about that in a wee bit, but it was good fun. I enjoyed it. Luna Aaron is here. Jimmy Legg, you star. Uh, always great to see you in, Luna, as well. Willie here is, is here as well. Uh, Willie Dolier, just as the chat jumps again, let's go scroll back up. Whiskey Jason, good to see you, Jason. Uh, Bill is here. Bill Balistreri, same evening, Aquaviti. Hope you and the family are well. We're all doing very well, Bill. I hope you and yours are too. The doc, McAllen Fine and Rare, is uh, in helping uh, Whiskey Jason and Alistair Gray tonight as moderators. Uh, so if you're trying to get my attention and struggling, uh, hopefully I'll be able to pick up your comments tonight. Um, those guys can sometimes help a wee bit too. Daniel Vermas is here. Good to see you, Daniel. Pete Head is here, Silverlock Whiskey Club. Uh, Shane Lay is in. Desi Vleeland. Graham Buchanan. Aquavite, good evening. Graham, is that a new name? If it's a new name, you're very welcome. It's nice to see you, my friend. Rico Denert is here. Greg's Whiskey Guide from France. Uh, Raster. Neil Cochran. Anthony Dunn. Marcus Kreitner. Good to see you, Max. Everwind Hells. Wood, that's Helen and Andy. Good to see you both. And their son, Alan. I made a bit of a slip up and referred to Helen and Alan. And it's Helen and Andy, but it turns out that that's their son. So, eh, yes, no bad. Nice to see you, Alan. Maybe you're hanging about. I don't know. Uh, Marcus Cres Cresimir is here. Lee J. Brown. Good to see you guys. So many of you. And over 200. Listen, I, I kind of, this was really short notice as well. But what it tells me is that even when there's nothing planned, people are still looking for that week in a sense, a community, that connection. And if it's around whiskey, I think that's a very positive thing. And I'm 
I just said to the guys who are who are kind of backstage just now for the is it a space side game? I admitted to them, and I think I've admitted on the V Pub before that I'm starting to miss people. Genuinely really miss people. And I think that that's fairly natural. And it's very tempting with all these kind of new messages that are coming out about how they're going to ease off lockdowns in various places around the world. It's kind of we're not really following the letter of the law. We're kind of trying to pick up on our interpretation of the spirit. Of, of what they're trying to tell us. And I think it's there's this kind of um, feeling that is starting to lift a bit and we can start to get back to normal. Uh, my wife's in healthcare, and I can tell you that that is very much not the case. This is not, despite the rates dropping, despite things looking uh, a bit better than they perhaps were a couple of weeks ago, we're nowhere near out of the woods yet. And I don't want to talk about it. It's not what the VPUB's about. But if anybody has access to the BBC, I strongly recommend a documentary called The Hospital. Um, there's two episodes gone out already and it is absolutely eye-opening that we can have that access to that content and see what's actually happening. I mean, it's powerful, it's difficult to watch at times. There's very positive things, it's very reaffirming on the human condition, honestly, but it's bittersweet and desperately sad and quite scary at times too. That is the kind of stuff that we need to watch so that when we make our decisions going forward on how we interpret this guidance that's coming at us from who, whoever our leaders are, it helps us make cannier decisions. Nick DV has just joined Aquavite Barflies. Nice to welcome you, Nick. Thank you, my friend. Enough of the preachy, Roy. I don't mean to be preachy at all, but I think uh, we've got a long way to go yet, and uh, I'm very, very grateful uh, that whiskey and the whiskey community, honestly, is helping me get through. Eric Evanson is here. Good to see you, Eric, my friend. Stewie Baby is in as well. Even though Roy sipping a lovely Talisker Port Rui. Uh, what is your dram this evening? Is it a space side? <laughs> I am actually sipping a blend. Well, it's a blended malt. This was a gift to me uh, from Craig Dolier, who may or may not be in tonight. This is the Old Perth blend. Uh, blended malt, Scotch whiskey, cast strength. Um, this is a red wine finish. The number two limited edition, 62.3%. It's very, very bold, um, very rich and strongly flavoured. I'm just going to try it with a wee drop of water in it. It's not had any water in it tonight as I've been sipping away, um, but I'm enjoying it. Cheers and welcome everyone. I hope your Sunday is a comfortable one. Cheers. Yeah, it's very, very rich. And the ABV brings a lot of spice that matches quite well with that kind of... It's, you would, I think anybody would pick this up blind and they would taste that it was a wine finish. The wine cask is here. This is a bold whiskey. I mean, this is going to bring... This is going to make uh, people that are new to whiskey, it's going to make their eyes water. It is, it's really bold and powerful. The ABV is fully helping communicate with all of your senses. It's very malty. It's quite young, I think, on a palate. This behaves like a young whiskey. That's non age statement, as I mentioned, blended malt. But it's good. And I'm starting to enjoy. It's still not my favourite style of whiskey, wine finished, honestly, or wine matured. But I'm starting to enjoy it a wee bit more. Isn't it funny how you spend a wee bit of time with something and you understand it a bit better? But you're mentioning is it a space side story, and we are going to play a wee game of that tonight. I've got Gregor McQuee. He's brought along a few friends as well. Um, it was originally supposed to be some guys from the States that was going to include Zach Andrews, Leanne Rayner. Um, but uh, as you've as I've mentioned on a VPUB recently, uh, Zach Andrews, I think it was, raised a glass for Leanne because our, our dad had a bit of a health issue and he had to go in for a bit of a procedure, quite a significant procedure. Um, so we pushed out uh, those guys. Maybe they'll join us next week or sometime in the future, but there's no rush for any of that. But I got word back from Leanne that her dad's doing very, very well, and he's come out of the procedure uh, better than expected. So it's great to hear that, Leanne. And uh, as a space side game, this VPUB, this format is uh, welcome. Uh, we'll look forward to welcoming you whenever it suits you. Thank you so much for, uh, for uh, letting me know that everything's good at your side. So it's Gregor McQueen um, and a few of a couple of Gregor's friends, as well as uh, 
long-term uh, bar fly from down south, Sid Martin, that's going to join us tonight. So we've got a full cohort in of four. We've got a quartet uh, willing to play the game tonight. Uh, but it, it sounds like maybe only one of them are willing to do the asking tonight. <laughs> I need more people that are brave enough to turn up and do some asking, but it's fine. It's, it's absolutely fine. It's fully optional. If it's me that has to do that asking, that's fine too. Peter Wilcox is here. Good to see you, Peter. He's saying, hello, Roy. I have that old Perth. It takes a little getting used to, but very nice. Cheers, Pete. I have to say, this is the first time I've put a wee drop of water in it, Pete. I must be enjoying it because I got it for my birthday, and you can see uh, there's a fair bit... Uh, out of it. Now I did share a wee bit um, when Craig dropped it over, we sat in the garden, full two metres distancing, it was a lovely sunny day and we had a couple of the drams of that, but m the rest of it has been me since then in the last couple of weeks. So I'm reaching for it and I am enjoying it. For anybody who's interested, my patrons have been super patient and they've not had a lock-in in two months because of this whole thing, because I've been bringing it to VPubs a week. It's meant that I've had no time to give them their kind of exclusive lock-in that I do for patrons every month. And I've been promising it for a while. It's happening on Tuesday night, I hope. I know I would love to do patron lock-ins, patron-only lock-ins on a weekend. I know it's easier for you, especially guys in North America. Um, but I'm going to try and bring it. I will bring that on Tuesday night. Um, and the things that I've been promising recently, uh, like uh, sharing the, the whiskies and things that were that were gifted to me, the whiskies that I treated myself to um, for my birthday and things, and just kind of catch up with a lot of uh, Patreon housekeeping that I've been delinquent on in the last couple of months. But thanks to all my patrons, it's very much down to them for this thing. To, the, the reason that this exists is down to them. But the reason it's been able to exist twice a week is down to their patience as well, and I'm very, very grateful. I'll see you on Tuesday night, guys, and uh, uh, maybe tomorrow morning or something, I'll set that video up and share the link and everything with you through Patreon. Um, but I'm going to share these whiskies uh, that I uh, was gifted. And the reason I've not been talking about my birthday very much is because uh, it's past now, it's, it's weeks ago now, is because I wanted to, I didn't, I knew how generous you guys are and I knew that you would, you would want to gift me things, and I didn't want that to be a thing. I didn't, I didn't want it to be um, anything. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, th down to things like uh, people knowing me, I guess, and down to things like Facebook and stuff, uh, the gifts came regardless. I'm very, very grateful to you all, and I'm going to find a way to share them properly and give them the attention that they all deserve. Thank you so much. Orange Will is here. Uh, Orange Will is uh, the guy who contributed the quiz questions tonight. He doesn't know that it's going to be his quiz questions tonight. Um, I forgot to reach out to him before the live, but I've used uh, Orange Will's questions for the majority of the quiz tonight, either directly or I've used them as inspiration and kind of modified them a wee bit. So if, uh, if you want to stay till the quiz at the end, I encourage you to do that. It's an easy one tonight. Uh, and he's saying, yeah, all, uh, yeah, Roy always does the lock-ins. Topless, really missing that. <laughs> Uh, no, there's none of that goes on. Multi-mission men are saying, don't you worry, Roy. It comes where it comes. No rush. We are not going anywhere. Yeah, I think the feedback I've had has been very positive. Nobody feels cheated. And uh, I think patrons know that I'll always find ways to kind of uh, show how grateful I am. Jean de la Cuisine is saying, Orange Will, is it going to be an easy question? <laughs> um, yes, the thing is, is that tonight the, the quiz... Uh, I have to say, I think they're fair. I think there's a few in there that are very fair questions. There's a couple of them that caught me off guard and had me questioning, uh, but it was structured in such a way that I couldn't, I couldn't take part in the quiz myself. It was obvious what the answers were. He'd, he'd mark the answers as bold. Uh, it's nicer if I actually play the quiz myself and then I get a better gauge on how I interpret it. Uh, Helen is saying, Q banana skins, absolutely. And Eric is saying, is a Loch Lomond. Lock Lomond 12 year old wine yeast have a bit of peat in it as well. Uh, that's right, Eric. I sent that out to you. Have you had it? Have you received it yet? Um, does it have? I don't remember, but if we go back to that stream, we'll know exactly what it has because you remember the infographic uh, that Michael Henry shared with us so that we can determine uh, each of his expressions. Still got a wee drop of that left. Isn't it gorgeous? One of the fruitiest whiskies ever. And I think you would struggle to pick that out as a Loch Lomond. I'd love those guys to release that, I really would. I think it would be a fantastic whiskey, a really different take on Loch Lomond as well. 
That's the grace saying, well done to all the Barfly winners and Friday's charity draw. It's down here. I wanted to mention it. Let's mention it now before we start. Is it a space side game? Okay. So we know that the lockdown whiskey festival happened a week ago. Uh, on Saturday, it was fantastic. We managed to reach the target uh, for, for Maggie's Highlands Cancer Charity while we were live. I know that we went a long time. I know that's so much down to me. Um, but we reached the target. But we went on and we continued to donate as well. And that's, yes, there were prizes there for people to get. And people understood that that was part of the dynamic. But I know that it's just down to the generosity and people understanding the weight of what they were doing and, and how much the charities are struggling in general right now. It's amazing. It's amazing. And what was also amazing is that uh, I, I just managed to catch the the stream. I wanted to stay and hang out, but it was Friday night. I'd just done a, a VPUB on Thursday with Billy Walker. Friday was it was family time. But I sneaked in and I listened and I, and I scrolled back and I listened to who had won the prizes. And I was really, really pleased to hear that so many people had uh, so many barflies, so many of my familiar faces that joined me here had been fortunate in picking up prizes there. There was a good five, six, seven of you had managed to pick up prizes. I'm not sure who's won what right now. I'm going to take guidance from the guys at Tomatin in terms of who's won these two from me. That's the Ralphie 10-year-old Kalila there and the Sirius 31-year-old. Um, I'm happy to take care of the shipping if I can do it legally, of course. Um, and if it's international or whatever, I'll follow to Martin's lead on that. Uh, I know that Marcus Kreitner, um, I'm trying to think of, I'm trying to remember who else was, was lucky in that draw, but it was amazing. Um, yes, so well done and congratulations to everybody who managed to uh, get, snag themselves a really nice prize in that. Greg saying is, that was crazy, that lockdown and the charity thing as well. It was great fun, wasn't it, Greg? Absolutely great fun. And if anybody wants to see Greg, Greg's got his own content he's putting out there on YouTube as well. But I very much enjoyed Greg's contribution to the Whiskey Cast live stream that went out recently as well, about a week ago. Greg was involved in that. And I think it's quite nice that, that folk from the community are being invite, invited onto Mark's uh, live streams as well. Mark's very well connected. He's been in the industry. He's been doing his thing, his podcast, for a long time now. He's got a lot of connections, and he knows all the folk in the industry. So I think it'd be tempting just to kind of have big-ticket names all the time. But he's reaching out to to uh, bloggers and writers and uh, people inside the industry, people at all levels in the industry as well. Um, so it might be interesting for you to spend a wee bit of time uh, with Mark Gillespie as well. Uh, Eric is saying, uh, uh, your gift arrived on Tuesday and I'll be popping it open shortly and letting you know what I think. Thank you for the sample. You can make certain Aquavita sees this. Yes, I got it, Eric. I, 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 and I actually now I think I remember picking up your message as well to say that it arrived. Um, I'm glad it got to you. Kim Grant Whiskey saying, just poured a Millstone five-year-old Sherry and PX finish. A beautiful Dutch whiskey, I have to say. Millstone um, has impressed me in the past as well, Kevin. Rico is saying, may I direct ask you for your opinion on Capardonic 18 peated since we met here tonight? Ah. Rico, I thought it was very, very good. I, I've got a bottle of it here. It's probably out of shot. It's behind me somewhere. There it is there. This is the Capardonic. It's still sealed. But it was part of the lineup at the London Whiskey Club, the last tasting event that I made it to before lockdown. Back in March, the Capadonic 18 was there in the lineup and it held its own amongst amazing stellar closed and silent distilleries. It was fantastic, really nice, good age, good value whiskey as well. If you can pick that up for the price I paid, about 100 euros for a cast strength 18 year old Peter Capadonic, it's nothing to talk about. It's I, I would fully recommend it. It's not going to be available to everybody and it's certainly not going to be available for very long. Get hold of it while you can. My next dram tonight is also going to be from a silent distillery, a, a treat to myself. Scogsmart is saying, if you were asked to revise the regulations for Scotch, what would you change? That's a rabbit hole. Tell you what I'm going to do, Scogsmart. I'll write down here, revise SWA regs rant <laughs> and i'll cover it after we've played a game of is it a space aid because the guys are waiting in the background while i jabber on to you guys for 20 minutes so let's bring them in and have a wee bit of fun and play along with uh, those guys uh, 
and then I'll I'll tell you what I would like to change. Um, we'll just we'll we'll pick we'll pick one specific wee topic. We'll just pick pick one and we'll go with that tonight. Uh, but it's an interesting question, Scogsmarb, and they, I think it's a, could be rabbit hole ridden. Whiskey Bond is in. Good to see you, my friend. Good to welcome you. And go down that rabbit hole, Aquavite. I will after game of It's a Space Side. Okay, I'm looking at Gregor McQuee. You've all seen Gregor before, but I'm ask, going to ask him for a thumb up and see if he's good to come in and have a wee game of Is it a Space Side? Gregor McQuee, it's always fantastic to see your happy face, my friend. How are you? How are we doing? Evening, Roy. Evening, Barflies. Afternoon, American Barflies. Yeah, I'm going to. I'm just going to move you along a wee bit so that you're not so far away from the camera. Because it looks like I'm looking away over here ah. and things that folk can notice. There we go. I can see you now. You're a bit closer to the camera now. Slanger. Great to see you, buddy. I know it's very early in the day where you are. Thank you so much for getting a, a little troop together to come in and participate. But you know the format. You know what we're going to do, don't you? Yes, indeed. Okay. Um, are you going to answer tonight or are you going to ask? I have a bottle, so I'll be answering. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, it's down to me then, my friend. Are you ready for a, a game of Is It a Space Side? I am. And you definitely have a Scotch single malt, malt whiskey that's part of the core range and is available to everybody. Yes. <laughs> I need more <laughs> conviction than that. Okay. Yes. Let me pull up the timer. I keep forgetting to do the timer thing. It's part of it. We're set to three minutes. I've hit the timer. It's down to me to ask. So let me ask you, Gregor, mm -hmm. is it a Space Side? Yes. It is a space side, okay. Is it one of the big four? That is Diageo, Pernod Ricard, uh, Edrington, or Grants? Yes. I'm trying to stall. <laughs> <laughs> trying to run the time away by stalling. <laughs> okay. Let's just go for it. Is it a Diageo release? No. Ah. Is there an age statement on it? Let me just check, Roy. Just check. Yeah, just, is I'll there an age check. statement? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, okay. It's a space side, non Diageo. One of the big four. Is it is it a Pernod Ricard? Yes. So we're looking at Glenlivet, we're looking at Aberlour. Longmorn, Tormor. Have I mentioned it already? <laughs> <laughs> well, in in the in in the ether in 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 the past. No, that's not a fair question. It's not a that's not a, that's not a straight question. It's got an age statement. Is it from Pernod Ricard? It is. So is it? Is it? Either Aberlour or Glenlivet. That's two questions. Uh, no. Oh, wow. There is an age statement on it. What else do they have out there? Is it... Could it be a Strathyla? No. So it's not Aberlour, it's not Glenlivet, it's not Strathyla. <clears throat> Is it 15 years or older? Yes. Is it Longmorn 16? Yes. <laughs> apologies, <laughs> apologies. It's the older one, but it's the same... Criteria. No, it's, it's the best one. Have you opened that? Is that open? I've, uh, I'm, I'm flexing. I'm, I have got one open. This wasn't open. I couldn't, I, I couldn't find the open one. <laughs> I have to say, in my personal opinion, the new Longmorn 16 is also a cracking dram. That's the original Longmorn 16 from about, I don't know, when that came out, 2011, 2012. And it stayed around until about 2015, 2016. Whoops. And I have to say, it's, a, it's an absolute blinder of a whiskey. Everybody's heard me over the years evangelize about that whiskey. I'm very glad that you've got a bottle of it on the go, and I do recommend that you get it open and enjoy it, Gregor. It's amazing. Will do. 
Thank you, buddy. Thank you, buddy. I was uh, nowhere for a while there, and uh, <laughs> you, you helped me out a wee bit with one of my favourites. Thanks for participating. Are you staying around till the quiz at the end? I am, yes. Excellent, buddy. I look forward to welcoming you a wee bit later. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers, Roy. Off to a good start. That's very, very encouraging for me. It looks like Sid Martin's going to be up next. Give me a wee thumb if you're ready, Sid. Excellent. Sid, I've met you a few times now. I think this is the first time that I've welcomed you onto the VPUB, is it? It is, yep. Yeah, fantastic. So nice to have you here, buddy. You're you're down south, of course, aren't you? Are you Brighton? Uh, about 20 miles north of Brighton. 20 miles north of Brighton. I knew you were yeah. kind of down that neck of the woods somewhere. But I've had the pleasure of uh, sharing a dram with you a couple of times over the last few years. And Sid, I have to say, you're, since the VPUB started, I think you've been one of those names that's constantly around. And uh, I thank you for it. And I thank you for not becoming fed up of me yet. <laughs> not at all, not at all. I'm going to ask you, are you ready to play a wee game of Visit a Space Side? I am. I'm very glad I um, changed my mind. I nearly had the same bottle as Gregor. Oh, you nearly had the long one. <laughs> so there's, the really really <laughs> there's nothing wrong with that. Everybody turning up with a long one 16, that would be amazing. <laughs> um, so I take it then that you've got a bottle on hand and therefore you're doing the answering? Yep. Okay, so it's me to ask the questions again. Okay, back on my shoulders. Yeah. Okay, Sid, if you're ready, let's go with it and just ask, is it a space side? No. It's not a space side. Okay. Is it a Highland, Sid? Yes. It is. Is it one of... No, I'm not going to ask that. I'm going to say, is it, a, is it a Diageo release? No. Okay. Is it mainland Highlands? No. So it's non Diageo from the islands. <clears throat> okay. Is it southern islands or northern islands? Oh, I had I sorry, I'd have to it has to be yes or no, I'm sorry, it's my it's my game as well. Is it is it northern islands? So is it is it yes. Mull or North? Yes. Okay. Is it Orkney? Yes. Is it Highland Park? Yes. Is there an age statement on it? No. Do you know how little I know about Highland Park's range? Yes. <laughs> 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 okay, <laughs> is it Valknut? No. <sighs> there's a there's there's a supermarket release, a forty four percent one. I think it's called Dragon Legend. Could it be the Dragon Legend? You beast. <laughs> is that it? Is it 44% as well or something? Bizarre. 43.1. 43.1. I knew it was I knew it was one of those neither meat nor fish things. I thought you know, um, Highland Park, they've got so many NAS. I thought, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll be good with that. But no, well done, mate. Cancel the timer. I have to say that you've done me a favour there, Sid, because as soon as you took me to Highland Park, I was I had a cold sweat. <laughs> I have long since lost grasp of what the core range is from Highland Park these days. So if anybody wants to catch me out, the next two guys, if they've got a bottle of Highland Park candy, they could probably grab hold of that and I'd struggle that with it. That was my strategy and it didn't work. So Yeah, that was close, but you were kind to me in the end. To, to get, I mean, that is one that's kind of, it was originally just a, exclusive to a couple of supermarkets, I think. Don't know if it still is now. Um, but yeah, Dragon Legend, it's, uh, it's, uh, I actually think it's not a bad dram. If I'm honest, I, you'd be quite happy recommending it to a lot of folk and having them sit. I haven't opened it yet. You haven't opened it yet. I haven't opened it yet. <laughs> I remember it being a wee bit thin and a wee bit young. Uh, I think there's a bit of sherry casking on there. I don't know if it's the, the richer, smokier side, but um, yeah, I'll, I'll perhaps uh, open it this evening and give you a, a steer later. Give me some feedback on it. Thank you for being kind to me, said Martin. Thanks no so much for joining as well. Are you staying around to the end? Yeah, yeah, I will. Of course you are, buddy. I look forward to seeing you later. Cheers, cheers, my friend. Thanks. Oh, 
I'm very relieved. I'm going to go out to the States again. I'm going to reach out to Cody. Cody, give me a thumb if you are in good shape. Excellent, my friend. Nice to welcome you into the VPUB, Cody. You're a lurker. You're not a participator. You're a friend of Gregor. And I believe, Cody, that you work for uh, Wonderback, Wonderback Whiskey. Yeah, that's right. Um, I uh, live out here on the farm in Hood River, uh, manage all of the aging and finishing and blending, um, and then also play the bland, brand ambassador role as well. Uh, nice. So good. And just like you, I mean, I'm missing everybody right now. Uh, oh, yeah. It's pretty crazy having to just kind of be isolated on the farm. Usually there's some sales trips in between and you get some fun human interaction, but, you know. Especially when it's about a topic that you're passionate about. I imagine that's kind of cool as well. Oh, exactly. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, I hear you. I hear you, my friend, and it's uh, it looks like uh, we've got a little bit more time to put in before we uh, we can uh, get together in the real world again. But yeah. it'll happen. And, it's uh, new normal. You know, it might be more things like this, which isn't bad. You know, you get to connect with people like yourself that we wouldn't normally get to connect to. Which yeah, it has been very fortunate. It has been one of the silver linings that this has happened when we do have technology at the at the stage it's at. Uh, Espen Anderson from Norway has bought me a dram. You star, he's saying good evening, Roy and the Barflies. Espen, thank you so much, my friend, for your virtual dram. Cheers to you, Espen. Yeah, I have to say that whiskey has been very helpful to me at getting me through, Cody, and I hope that you, I hope you've been able to keep active and things. I believe that Wonderback, I mentioned to you just before we went live, I, I knew about the first collaboration that you did to bring out your batch one but you're obviously working with uh, uh, other producers out there, but you are basically sourcing through different distilleries a very specific ma mash bill um, in order to uh, produce the Wonderback batch releases, right? Yep, that's correct. Um, it's a pretty similar mash bill from distillery to distillery, but you know we're changing the stills that we operate on, sometimes the yeast that we're using uh, during the mash. Um, and so it just, it creates a unique product each time. And it's all a very small batch thing for each collection. Um, so, you know, when we get it back here, we split it up into about 2000 bottle releases. Uh, some of them will have different finishing barrels and different ABVs attached to them in our line, but um, it's, it's a lot of fun. We have a really- Well, kind as I of mentioned to you, none of that is making its way out to Europe as of yet, but we have a mule in Gregor McQuee and when he's allowed to put a pair of Adidas back on again and come running across to Scotland, he's promised to squirrel me a wee bottle, and I look forward to that as well. Oh, I'll send him with something special for you. Cody, it's nice to see that uh, folk that are working in the industry as well are, are um, passionate and joining into the V-pubs as well, and uh, it's nice to welcome you in face-to-face, -face, my friend. Are you ready to play a wee game of Is It a Space Aid? I am. Is it all right if I throw you a curveball and uh, ask you the questions? Uh, yes, you absolutely can. Have you changed your mind? I've changed my mind. I'm going to ask That's you. That's brilliant. That's good. Even okay, even you're going to ask me. So that means that I have to have... Take it I easy on me, Roy. official <laughs> bottling on hand. Okay. Uh, let's. I'll just pick the one that's closest at hand. I'll pop it over here. It's the only bottle on my desk, Cody. Um, I'm going to set the timer in a second. Thank you for stepping up, my friend. I'll start. Absolutely. You're inspiring there on that last one. <laughs> Fantastic. Good luck, Cody. Uh, ask away, my friend, when you're ready. All right. Um, is it a space side? Yes. Okay. Um, is it a part of the big four? No. Okay. Uh, does it have an age statement? No. Okay. Sorry. Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> that's an H statement. Oh, that's better. Thank you. Um, is it older than a 12 year? No. Is it a Glen? Yes. Is it Glen Burgi? Oh, it's not a Glen Burgi, no. Just coming straight out of the traps. Try to snipe it, Cody. It's not Glen Burgi. Oh, that's right. Uh, let's see. Uh, 
That is Glenn. I'm going to give you a wee clue here. Okay. Me wavering on is it an age statement or is it not should help you a lot. Ooh. I can see Gregor in the background. <laughs> he's, going, he's going like this. <laughs> uh, let's see. Glenn Grant? Uh, it's not a Glenn Grant. And it is a Glenn, huh? Ask me some questions about ABV, Cody. Uh, is it 46% or less? No. Okay. Uh, let's see. Is it a Glen Allocky? Oh, sniping again. It's not a Glen Allocky, my friend. But you're uh, getting closer. You're getting closer. Oh, I've only got one more guess. Is it a Glenn Farkless? Yes. Go for it. Is it a ten year? Sorry? Ten year? Uh, are you asking me, uh, is it a Glenn Farkless 10 year? Yeah. Oh, I did say that it was not 46 or below ABV. Oh, that's right. My friend, it's a uh, Glenn Farkless 105. Oh, beautiful. This is almost always non age statement, but occasionally, depending on the batch, it does have an age statement on there, but it's always, if it does, it's displayed on the back. When you asked me, I had assumed that my bottle was an on-age statement expression, and I said, no, I span it round, and yes, there is indeed an age statement on there. So I had to backpedal a wee bit. So that happens with Glenn Farkless 105, and it, that's when I tried to help you a wee bit there because I realised that might have been a wee bit unfair for you. Uh, but Glenn, that, was that was a brave, brave effort, buddy. Well done. Thank you so much. When you got Glenn Allocky, I thought you were going to close in on it, and you did, but you wow. just picked the wrong expression. Thanks for participating, my friend. Well done. Peace. Are you hanging around till the end? Yep, I'll be here till the end. I look forward to having you back in. Cheers, Cody. Wow. Thank you. Thank you, Ray. Mm. It would have come off amazing if any of his early snipes had worked out. He was in on the Glens. He had Glenn Grant. He had Glenn Allocky. And he got to Glenn Farkless in the end, but just a wee bit late. Chris, uh, we've got Chris Brown. And Chris, are you ready, my friend? Give me a thumb if you're good to come in. He is superb. Chris Brown, so good to see you. Or Chris B, as the Barflies would know you, yes? Hi, Roy. Now, you're friends of Gregor as well, of course, but you're on the yeah. East Coast, aren't you? Um, I'm from the East Coast of Scotland, yeah. I live up in the Perth area now. Where are you in Perth? Um, I'm, I'm I'm actually out in the middle of nowhere, but I, I'm sort of up near Blair Gowrie. I know it very well. I know it very well. Um, yeah. So I'm I'm originally a Perth boy myself, <laughs> and uh, I uh, my mum stayed in Blair Gowrie for a wee while. It's oh, a right. nice part of the world up there. It's a nice place to come up at summertime and get some strawberries, right? Yes, that's absolutely right. Yeah. Fantastic to welcome you into our VPUB, Chris. It's nice to see you here. Are you ready for a wee game of Is It a Space Side? Yes, absolutely. And uh, are you asking or answering, my friend? Um, I'm going to ask. Oh, yes, you star. The sigh of relief that I have when people say I'm going to ask. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind. Okay, Chris, I've got a bottle here. It's the only bottle on my desk. It's a single malt scotch whiskey, part of the core range. And uh, I'll set the timer and say, ask away when you're ready, my friend. Okay. Um, does the distillery name begin with an A, B, or C? Oh, there's somebody's been strategizing. Uh, yes. <laughs> okay. Does it have an H statement? Yes. <laughs> Is it 15 years or younger? Yes. Uh, 
has it been mentioned on a VPUB in the last three weeks? Oh, by me? Yes. I don't think so. I'm going to say no. Okay. Um, does the distillery name have more than one word to it? Yes. Is it a Kalila? No. Is it on I, or I, I think. Mm. You know that one that one word thing. Let me say yes, but. Right. Okay. It's a brand thing. It's their choice. Right. Is it a Highland? No. Is it uh, an island? No. This is going to take some heroic sniping, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Two left. Yeah. Um, We're not even sure what region it is yet. We just know that it's that's not a highland, right? Or an island. Is it a lowland? No. Oh no. What's the name of the game, Chris? I'll give you that as a clue. Right. 15 seconds on the clock. I'm just going to... Don't, gonna don't, worry. don't, don't, don't worry about the time. Um, is that a Ben Romack? It's not. I'll give you one more guess, buddy. I've got okay. to pluck it out the sky. <laughs> I'm looking for... Um... How do twelve? Oh, you got the age right. You got the region right. The distillery wrong. Ah, Belveni twelve. Now, when you said, "Is there is there two names in the distillery name?" I thought he's yeah. onto something there because they call himself the Belveni. That's but right. then, as it went on, and you asked Kalila, I went, "Oh no!" And I realised I might have sold you a, a bit of a a, a duffer there. So. I love that I that you like it, yeah. yeah. Do you know, and I don't talk about it much. It's kind of one of these ubiquitous drams that yeah. we often don't pay much attention to. But that's not to say there's anything inherently wrong with this. You'll notice I've got this on hand and it's still sealed. But the reason I have this is not only would I happily pour this and share it with uh, guests and folk that are kind of relatively new to whiskey and they're looking for a lower ABV experience, but it's nice to have this sealed so that if you do get somebody enjoying whiskey, you can give them a wee going away gift. And yeah. uh, I think Bovary Doublewood uh, does a very good job of that, and it's a fairly solid whiskey as well. Buddy, well, I'm so yeah. sorry, but at the same time, I did well tonight. I think I've, <laughs> I, I think I managed to get four out of four, um, yeah. and that's two asking, two answering. Um, great stuff. I, I think I was curious to see how your strategy was going to play out that ABC thing, and um, but obviously you got down to the last couple of questions before we were able to nail down that we were looking for a space either, buddy. But well done. Are you able to hang around? I know you're starting very, very, very early in the morning. Your essential service is your front line. Um, we should all raise a wee glass, actually, to you and your, your like. I'm going to pour one of these. Yeah, I'll like, hang on until the end and try my, try my hand at the quiz. Fantastic. It's going to be great to welcome you back in at the end. But in the meantime, I'm going to raise a glass to you and all your Good. kind that are going out every day and helping us through this mess. Thank you. It's really appreciated, Chris, and thanks for joining in a VPUB. Thanks very much. Slange. Cheers, buddy. Oh, I'm relieved and a wee bit pleased about that. I was struggling. I was losing a lot. I was taking a lot of blows over the last couple of weeks of playing that game. Um, so I did okay tonight. Um, if anybody's interested and playing and participating in that game, there's a waiting list running now. And, uh, you know, it's not that long. You're going to be able to come on, and especially when it's kind of ones and twos and 
pairs, single people coming in, I'm able to kind of match them up and then uh, we can probably schedule a time in the near future. For as long as we're playing this game, you might be able to come along and play along with us. I hope you find it's good fun. I certainly enjoy it. I was anxious tonight. I wonder if anybody picks up the, the anxiety. I was anxious for them as well. Multi-mission is saying, you're now ready for your first SES mission, Roy. <laughs> Skogsmart is saying, so about the rabbit hole. Absolutely, let's get into that quick rabbit hole. But this flavours in my mouth of this. This is a treat to me for my birthday. Uh, this is a thanks to Sevi. I was actually on the lookout for this. I had uh, tasted not ex this exact release before, but a similar one. Um, but Sevi uh, found this for me <laughs> in my local town at the Good Spirits Company. <laughs> I'd been looking for it online, and uh, Sevi said, yeah, they've got that at Good Spirits Company. I ordered at Good Spirits Company, and Matthew, the owner of Good Spirits Company, who's doing free local del delivery, dropped it off uh, the next afternoon. Um, I opened it uh, for World Whiskey Day yesterday. For those of you who know why I like Klein Leash, and Klein Leash at 25 years old um, would be a very expensive prospect, honestly. Uh, this is a, from 1994, bottled in uh, 2019. In November last year, this was bottled. It's a 25-year-old Imperial silent distillery um, right down on the banks of the River Spey. Imperial was. Uh, it's been long gone. It's uh, it's the site of Dunmunnock Distillery now. And uh, But this is a 25-year-old silent distillery for around about £150, £160. And this tastes and behaves a lot like a Klein Leash to me. Certainly a lot of the uh, lovely notes that I get out of a Klein Leash, this tastes like so if you like that really clean that really kind of um it's, it's not as it's not as i wouldn't say i'm getting a lot of salt or, or anything on it but it's got that really clean refill bourbon cask uh, uh lick to it it's got the kind of barley sugar the ever so slight um you know the wood has clearly treated this spirit very carefully over its time And that clean, clean leashy waxiness is there. It's maybe not quite as mouth coating and oily as a clean leash, but the majority of it is there. And for a silent distillery, I think that's great value. So Skogsmart asked me what kind of uh, revisions would I, and I'm not, I've not heard all the arguments about why the, the regulations are and why they exist. But there's one that I would change, and it's been a, a typical theme. Uh, for a lot of discussions that we've had in VPUB, I think Roddy and I have discussed it. Fred Ling, when he was on, we discussed it and things like that as well. And we need to talk about how confusing Scotch whisky still remains despite the revisions. And one of the regulations I would change is the categories of Scotch. And I'm not talking about Scotch whisky producing regions. I'm talking about defining the categories. In Scotland, we only make two whiskies. We make malt whisky and we make grain whisky. That is it. There's nothing confusing about it. And yet, <laughs> there is confusion about it because people don't understand how to interpret what uh, what that says. A blended scotch, what does that actually mean? A blended malt, what does that mean? A blended grain, what does... I don't understand what these things are. We only make two whiskies, malt and grain. If we mix these, we have a blended scotch. It's that easy. That's, that's what we have. If we take two malts, it's just malt whiskey. And if we take two grains, it's grain whiskey. We don't need to use that word blended over and over and duplicate it. It's too confusing. And a lot of people that are trying to make fantastic blended malts or fantastic blended, blended grains don't want to confuse that end product with a blended scotch. So we just call it malt whiskey and grain whiskey. I would allow permit, permit those to be categories, malt whiskey and grain whiskey. And then if we want to further define it, we can say single malt or single grain or single blend and have a sixth potential category, but m simplifying the language. We just have malt whiskey and we have grain whiskey. That's, that's what I would change. I don't know if that makes any sense or anybody would agree. Jimmy Legg is saying, McAllen Fine and Rare put Acrovitae at the beginning and end. He seems to see that. Uh, McAllen Fine and Rare saying, I checked back the Series 31 year old goes to Lee Hosey Haddington Whiskey and the Ralphie Kalila 10 uh, to Jeremy Watts, or so the last name was hard to understand. Um, ah, okay, is that the, the giveaway? So, uh, how have you worked it out then? Is that because they listed and numbered the lots? 
I don't know. I've not heard from from Scott. That was really late on Friday night that the draw went out. It's probably going to be tomorrow that I discover um, who I'm sending the prizes to, and and I'll I'll take care of the shipping, um, and I'll do that shipment directly if if I can do it legally. Uh, Eric is saying I'm opening single malts of Scotland um, Imperial 23 year old for my 30th birthday in June. Slancha, I hope it's as good as this one. Eric, I don't doubt for a second that it will be. All the Imperials that I've tried, I mean, Imperials now are very mature. Um, they've all been in cask for a long, long time. Imperial was closed, in, I think, in the late 90s. Um, so, uh, you know, you're going to be, anything that's bottled now is going to be well in excess of 20 years. And it's a beautifully crafted whiskey for the most part. This is gorgeous. Uh, Daniel saying, I have to go uh, uh, ride this beautiful day out. When I get home, I'll pour a dram from the debunked Willowbank distillery in New Zealand. Yeah, defunct, yeah. Uh, 1988, 23-year-old cast strength in my uh, uh, World Whiskey Day choice this year. Love you all. Thank you, Daniel. I hope you do when you finish your work today. You get a chance to put your feet up and relax for a wee bit, my friend. And that sounds like a cracking dram. I tried the Caden Heads. Uh, was that from Willowbank? It was the Small Concern. I think that was from, I think that was from them, or maybe not. Am I confusing it? Um, but yes, Willowbank closed a New Zealand distillery. Hell's Widdell, Helen is saying, agree with simplification. John Delacuisine is, all I want to know is exactly what's in the bottle. Where does it come from? How was it made? Is it coloured or not? Absolutely. I think uh, we take baby steps and chip away at these things. Uh, and hopefully, uh, you know, what happens is that people see that these uh, successful brands that are growing and getting traction and doing quite well and becoming quite profitable they can see that it's often because of that very thing with minimal spend on on marketing and uh, overblown claims and celebrity partnerships and all of the nonsense that goes along with when you don't have the natural presentation and right when you're speaking to that side of the market that you can have uh, successful models that do use natural presentation Bud says, Scott said they intend to surprise the winners with what shows up at their door. Ah, they will only contact the donors and give them the address. Ah, that's interesting. Uh, Whiskey Bond is saying, that is crystal clear. It took me a, a, a while to learn what a vatted malt for a while. Again, we just lose all this pure malt, vatted malt, blended malt. We lose all that confusion. It's just, it's just malt. It's just malt whiskey. But if you want further definition of a single malt, we use the single word. That's easy then for people to consider, okay, so now we're still looking at malt whiskey, the same as the other malt whiskey on the shelf, but this is a single malt because it requires further, why does it require further definition? Because it's the product of a single distillery and that's very easy for people to grasp. Um, Eric, Eric Evanson saying, wow, the nose on that sweet and floral with light sweet fruit, such a lovely dram, so fruity and oily, it's a peach. Hope they bottle this, that's him, trying that wine yeast, a ah, Loch Lomond. I'm going to get what I've got. I'm going to split with what I have left of that with someone as well. Somebody else needs to needs to enjoy how good a whiskey that is. Uh, Jimmy Legacy, and if the distillery has the info, I want to know as much as possible in a bottle. Not allowing that is criminal. Well, for me, uh, you know, there's sometimes it's kind of they maybe don't want to tell us how long it was in what particular cask at what area of the warehouse and. Uh, uh, Sometimes there's too much data, there's too much information. Um, but if you're adding something to it, for example, like E150A, if you're actively adding something to a whiskey and you don't tell us, I think that's criminal, Jimmy. I do. There is, we are, on, that's not going to last for a long time. We are not going to be in an in a, in a in a society for very long that we're going to be able to consume consume something that we don't know we're consuming. And that's what happens if you drink a Scotch whiskey with E150A in it, because they're not required to put it on the bottle, unless you're in Germany. Um, and there's lots of reasons that we should be following some of the things that they do over in Germany, believe me. Yeah, Anthony Dunn's bought me a dram. He's saying, have you seen the announcement? Another Dreamcast 28-year-old at £490 a bottle. Something worth experiencing uh, or, or just a cash and grab from Jameson. So this is the Red Breast Dreamcast. I mean, £490 for a 28-year-old. Listen, I don't doubt it's going to be a fantastic whiskey. But that seems heavy on price, doesn't it? And they're, they're clearly cashing in on the success that they've enjoyed 
uh, you know, the interest have stirred up on previous releases. Aye, that's too dear. That's not a bottle that I'll be... Listen, if you've bought some, Anthony, and you're willing to, to, get, to give me a wee sample of it, yeah, I'd love to try it. Um, but it'd be interesting to, to hear the people that are willing to spend that kind of money on a 28-year-old product. Do you think they're going to get the value back? But Jenkins is here. Good to see you, bud. But what will the market departments do if we make it clear and simple? Confusion is common in marketing, Aquavitae. We're changing. We're, abs uh, we're all changing. Uh, consumers have more and more power year by year, and we're making more and more demands. And uh, I, it's not even confusion, is it? Sometimes it's just kind of nonsense in place of openness. Um, it's amazing to me how many how many times you have a discussion with somebody in the industry and they tell you why something exists, why it is what it is. And you say, that's amazing. I'm so glad I heard that. Thank you for that. And you walk away feeling fulfilled and enlightened. You've learned something that you didn't know previously. And then it just takes about 90 seconds to dawn on you before you start to get frustrated immediately and say, why didn't they choose to say those words? In the packaging, on the bottle, a wee leaflet that on a necktie that goes around the neck, whatever, some way to explain what's just been explained to me and endear the brand and the product to me even more just by being open and honest. I'm finding that there's not often things that really need to be hidden. I'm not finding lots of cloak and dagger things going on. I'm finding that if you explain these concepts to knowledgeable, curious whiskey folk, they, they get it, they understand. And even the folk that don't, you'll find they're more curious than you imagine because they're more interested in the products that they're buying and really enjoying and engaging with. We're all much more interested. Say the words. Don't make up new words. Don't make up nonsense words. Say the words. That's, that's all we need to do. Uh, David Evans is here. He's saying, uh, Dartmoor are selling three-year-old for £150. Makes the red breast look cheap. There's an exception there, although I'll absolutely agree with you, David Evans, £150 is expensive. I had this discussion recently with a new distillery who's coming along and they're uh, talking about getting their inaugural release together. Why they're not doing the Kilcarran model and just doing a work in progress? That, oh, that is honest. Here's our whiskey at three years old. Uh, by the way, we need to charge this amount for it. I hope that's okay. Uh, we're not charging secondary market prices, but of course we're not pricing it at a three or four year old whiskey. Uh, this is our we need to start making money on this, and we think this is going to be collectible and sold on the secondary market. But here is our three-year-old. Here's our four-year-old. Here's our five-year-old. Here's our six-year-old. Work in progress. Kilkerran did it in different wood. They did bourbon wood, and they did sherry wood, and they were sharing it, and they were saying, this is not going to represent us. This is not going to be our core range going forward. We're looking for a much more mature thing. But here, I know you. we know you want to try it. Here's our work in progress, and we'll put that on the label. This is our work in progress. That model is, is honest and open and robust and it's clear for everybody to understand. There's no ambiguity there, it's work in progress. So if a distillery is bringing out its inaugural release, how do they price it? Because if you put it out there at 50 quid a bottle, because it's three-year-old whiskey, four-year-old, whatever it might be, it's just gonna be immediately taken and sold on the secondary market as a collectible for more because it's gonna be a batch release, it's gonna be a small release. So that extra money shouldn't go to people who's taking it in their left hand and selling it in the right hand. That extra money should go to the distillery. That makes sense that they should be able to invest on bringing as good a product that they can in the future. So then they've got a balancing act to come up with. What they think the secondary market will stand and then take a chunk off that and price it under that. But clearly it's still going to remain quite expensive if you just use the age years ratio, or sorry, the age uh, price ratio. However, Say the words. Say these words. Talk about it. Say, look, this is the first bottling that we've bought together. This is our inaugural release. Uh, we, 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 this is charged a wee bit higher than normal. We know that a lot of people are just going to lock this in their cabinet. They're not going to drink it. Uh, we'd like to keep it priced, so to encourage people to drink it as much as possible. But we are, we are pricing this in order to try and make money on this because we want to invest in our long-term future to bring you fantastic whiskies in the future. What's wrong with saying that? What's wrong with saying that we, we know we can't match secondary prices, we know that that's probably got its, its problematic in itself, but we can price it a wee bit under and make a bit more than probably um, than we should for a three-year-old whiskey.
for its inaugural release. And by the way, we've agonised over this first release. We're going to make it as good as we possibly can. We're going to take our absolute best casks. And if we're picking our best cask to go best foot forward for our first release, we're not putting it out there at 50 quid a bottle. It's going to be a wee bit more than that. Say these words, I think people will understand and accept and know that they are, when they buy that inaugural release, they're not just buying a three-year-old, four-year-old whiskey. They're investing in a project that they want to see exist um, and succeed and endure going forward. A whiskey bond is saying what distilleries are best at being honest and your opinion, of course. The obvious answer there would be to talk about Mitchell's, Springbank and Glengyle. But I've had to go at them. As you've heard me, I don't think there's enough information on their bottles, honestly. And I know that's for a different reason. Um, it's just we've come to one of the endearing things about them is that, you know, we can't tell what batch their 12-year-old uh, Springbank is unless we look at the ABV. And it looks like it's going to be the same for the Coquerin releases now as well. But I think they could tell us a wee bit more on the label if they chose to. But everything that they choose to tell on the label adds layers of complication and better record keeping, layers of complexity, more computing, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I can understand why that's kind of the thing down there. But I think that what we're seeing in Scotch whisky generally, whether you think Scotch whisky is getting better or worse in the future compared to where it used to be in the past, it's changing, that's for sure. But what we're seeing that we never saw in the past is much more honest presentation, much more producers putting out a core range there at 46% or above with age statements, describing exactly what the different characters are between the 12-year-old, the 15-year-old, the 18-year-old. I'm talking about producers like uh, Bon Stewart Distel uh, through Deanston Boona Haven. Um, obviously, there's lots of non-age statements and thing littering their range as well, and you can have a go at them for different things. But that was that was changes that they decided to put in place 10, 15 years ago, maybe longer than that, actually. Glen Allachie, we heard Billy Walker talk about it. We heard, and going back 30 years, it was only the independent bottlers or specialists, like maybe Spring Bank or whoever, that were bringing whiskey like that for the enthusiasts. This was a rare thing, and it's much more expansive now. There's much more choice available with that presentation. The legacy of Scotch whiskey was 40% ABV, heavily coloured blend. That's what built the Scotch whisky industry. Not all the time was it coloured. Maybe they had really good sherry casks that they were willing to put into their blend to colour it up. Maybe they were treating the sherry casks that were tired with Paxaret or other, you know, uh, themes of using sherry syrup. But that's where it came from, 40%. Export strength was 43%. And occasionally, if you knew somebody or if you were able to go into a specialist retailer, or a specialist wine dealer or whoever it might be, they might be able to acquire stock from an independent bottler like a Gordon and McPhail or a Caden Heads or a Samaroli or something like this. But these were the exception and they were difficult to get. Sometimes, not often, but you can walk into the supermarket and find a 46, 48% ABV presented product. And that's new. That's a new thing. John De La Cuisine is saying that they could at least make the information available on the website or something. Absolutely. It doesn't need to be on the label. It doesn't need to be on the front of the label. This can be here, just the way it is. And then on the back, instead of nonsense about, let's see what the Bovenny says on the back. The Bovenny distillery has been owned by the same independent family company for five generations. Nowhere else will you find a distillery that grows its own barley. that still malts its own traditional floor maltings. Come on. That still has that still has coopers to tend the casks and a coppersmith to tend the stills. That's what they choose to put on their bottle. Bovenny is the only, the only distillery, nowhere else it says, I think it says that here, nowhere else will you find a distillery that still grows its own barley. Nonsense that still malts its own traditional floor maltings, nonsense, that still has coopers to tend the casks and a coppersmith to tend the stills. I can't comment on the coppersmith side, but my goodness, they could give us honest information about what... Yes, it is a wee bit frustrating. It won't stop me enjoying that Bovenny 12 double wood. Honestly, it won't. But it does bring on a wee bit of frustration. Jimmy Legacy, and I hear that a lot, Roy, uh, but that 
just wasn't my experience. I drank McAllen right after coming off Crown Royal and Canadian Club mixed drinks. I came to blends later. It's different for us all, Jimmy. Our own personal experience isn't following a traditional Scotch whiskey journey because I'm speaking about 50, 60 years and longer. Um, I came into enjoying whiskey through single malt, absolutely. Um, but I'm talking about the industry as a whole. Uh, Anthony Dunn is saying, take a drink, relax, enjoy your dram. Tell us about it. <laughs> Thanks, Anthony. I hope you don't mind me going off on these wee tangents. Stu Baby saying, tried my first Isle of Rassi. Well, you wait today. If that's what they're aiming for, it's a decent dram. Bring on the inaugural at Crimbo. That's right, those guys are... Those guys are bringing out their inaugural release, which by the time they're bottling that this year, £99 a bottle will only be a three-year-old product. Perfect example of what I'm talking about. Eric Evanson asked for your favourite Irish. Uh, Red Breast Cast Strength is up there. I love Yellow Spot. I'm looking forward to trying the Blue Spot. I haven't got my hands on it yet. I love uh, Powers Lane, the Powers uh, St John's Lane, sorry. Um, so yes, any single pot style Irish, I love. I love it. Daniel Vermas is saying, the Flora and Fauna was the gateway to try single malts, I guess. Well, Flora and Fauna came after the six classic malts in 1988. The six classic malts changed the perception of Scotch whiskey in a way that took a lot of people by surprise. And I'm speaking about Scotch drinkers. They were suddenly presented with six malts on a plinth behind their local bar, and they said, why, why are there six whiskies together? What's this? Oh, these are six different regions, six different styles of single malt Scotch whiskey. They all taste different. They all taste different. Oh, let me try. People were able to say, oh, an island from Talisker. They were able to try a Western Highland in Oban, uh, a space cider style from Crag and Moor, and whether you want to call Dilwini a space cider or not, whether it's Highlands, um, certainly it's on that border, isn't it? So they were able to try that in a Lowlander in the Glen Kinchy, and of course, a heavily peated Lagavulin um, to represent Isla. And people were able to sit alongside each other. That was a seismic point in single malt, and that was on the back of the business that I have to say, for the most part, independent bottlers had generated, and the likes of uh, Glen Fittick, um, Glen Livett, McAllen by that time as well. McAllen were already in a single malt territory. Um, they'd been probably been doing it about 10 years by that time. So, yes, that was a that's a different thing for people to start with, to think about whiskey not as just a generic blob of whiskey but there could be definition and different flavours. And the different flavours weren't always associated with brands because before single malts, that was the definition. That was the flavour definition was represented by a brand. So you might know your granddad was a grouse man or a bells man or a black and white man, whatever it might be. Graham Horner is saying uh, you should try the Sexton or Napog Castle. There's lots of Irish to try. There's lots of world whiskies to try. It's a struggle. And on World Whiskey Day yesterday, um, I went into the section of my cabinet that's got all my American whiskies and world whiskies and things in there. And it was there was so much to choose from. I didn't know where to, to, to start. The majority of the whiskies on this shelf here are from all over the world. Um, it's, I, I constantly say it, but I just don't have the liver. <laughs> Do you guys not feel the same? Maybe. Maybe because I've got so much, because of the channel, I've got so many different bottles to talk about and to share uh, that it's becoming more and more difficult to to get through it all. But even you guys, I know that you know. I'm not just talking about the bottle chasers out there. I'm talking about the guys that genuinely just like looking for the next nice experience. You can quickly find that you have more open than you can try, and then if you start trying different profiles, different regions, different areas, different countries. It becomes more and more difficult to get through it. Jimmy likes saying generic blob of whiskey. Beautiful stuff. Yeah, apologies for the, the language sometimes. Hopefully you understand uh, the concepts, regardless of how ugly I deliver them. McAllen Fine Rare, I thought you'd mention the green spot Chateau Le Valbarton. Love it. I do love it. Chateau Montalena, I love as well. I think these are great whiskies. And again, these are these are remember, these are the, the whiskies that I don't really enjoy because they're they're wine cask. But those are a different take. A Yellow Spot is a fantastic whiskey, very rich. It's 46% with an age statement on it as well. It's better presented. I don't know how they stand on chill filtration color. 
you would hope uh, that certainly the chill filtration they choose not to, I bet they colour it. But it doesn't say on the label, so we're left open to interpretation, right? Silver Lock Whiskey Club is saying, eh, too small a liver for all the whiskey in the world. Aye, Silver Lock, that's exactly what I'm talking about. It's it's not in order to drink as much, drink, drink, drink. It's not consumption. It's flavour experiences that we're chasing. That's what we're after. I'm going to uncork a whiskey. This was another treat to myself. And I feel bad, I feel guilty about sharing this because uh, this was only available online uh, for a very short amount of time. Um, it disappeared quite quickly. And I normally... Uh, if it's if it's schmo, small release, kind of not available whiskey, it's not easy for me to talk about it and evangelise about it and share it. I mean, the, the one that I just shared with you there, the Imperial one, I hope you'll forgive me, that's a UK-only release from Single Malts of Scotland from Elixir Distillers. This is the same company as the Whiskey Exchange, Sukinder Singh. Um, it's exclusive to the UK. You're, not a lot of people are going to be able to get their hands on that. But bear in mind that most of the whiskey that I share on the channel is things that most people can get their hands on because that's what I want to evangelise about. That's what I want to share. And if it's things that people can't get their hands on, there's less sharing than that for me. But I have to treat myself occasionally to things that are for me. And this is one of these things. I hosted the first lockdown whiskey festival in Andy Bell. Great guy from Aaron came on to share a couple of his whiskies. And he was telling me about the Lag Distillery and one of the ways that they're um, uh, having exclusive whiskies coming from a distillery that doesn't have any mature product yet is they're taking stuff from Lochranza um, and heavily peated stuff and making it a distillery exclusive at Lag. And this is an example of that. This is the Macri Moore Fingles Cut Sherry Cask Cask Strength. And I was like, interesting, fine. But his reaction, his visceral reaction um, on that live stream told me that probably this is going to be a decent whiskey. And they said that because it's a distillery exclusive, they were going to sell some online. And that's how I was able to get my hands on this. What I will do instead, since I know that nobody's going to be able to get their hands on any of this, if I, if I, think, if I think it's worthy, I'll happily share it. So it's heavily peated, clearly heavily peated. The heavily peated Aaron is not going to be the same as a heavily peated Isla whiskey. On the nose, this isn't kind of, it's not, it's not nosing briny or ashen or maybe a wee bit. But it's, it's a bit quieter, it's a bit softer. Maybe a wee bit more aromatic. Very orangey. <laughs> okay, it's excellent. It's good to get that take on an Aaron. This is a neck pour. I've just opened it just now, thrown it in the glass. Quick nose and straight down. Need to spend time with it. But first impression, there was an Adelphi tasting that I did on one of these virtual tastings I did online a couple of weeks ago. It was really good. Lots of London whiskey. It was the London Whiskey Club event, if I remember correctly. Yes, it was. It was London Whiskey Club. And the last dram of the night was a Kalila. A Kalila from an Adelphi. Kalila from an independent bottler. There's loads of it out there. I mean, honestly, there's loads of Kalila. Always solid, always reliable. Thank God for Kalila. But this was different. This was from a sherry cask. And it was fabulous. Nice peat, nice sherry, married well together is a fantastic prospect. It just works. I don't know why it works, but it works. So imagine that really sweet orange that I get, that mandarin orange that I get on a lot of Aaron's, because it's here. This is a young whiskey as well. This is a non age statement. But it plays young. So it's sweet and juicy on arrival and all the spice develops mid palate to the end. Very orangey.
clove. What are the spices? This is a decent dram, and I didn't spend a lot of money on this. It'd be nice to know the age of it, but I appreciate that they've probably vatted it for a very specific purpose. I don't think it mentions the age anywhere on this. 54.4%. Um, but I will, I'll share a couple of uh, drams of this. Uh, since I know that you guys aren't going to be able, be able to get a hold of it. Okay. What could I ask that's Aaron centric? First person to tell me what my uh, Aaron whiskey of the year was a couple of years ago, I'll send you a wee dram. Go for it, I'll, I'll look to the chat. Now I know that some of you see your name appearing in the chat first, but that's because it's on your machine. By the time it goes through the ether and it arrives here on every, everyone else's feed, the orders can be different. So I'm going here and try and catch somebody. On my screen, and I'll take a screenshot, it's a whiskey bond. Uh, I'm tr Mark, I think I think a whiskey bond is Mark. I'm not sure if I'm making a mistake there, my friend. I apologise. Whiskey bond. Um, and I'll make a note of that. Fingles cut. Whiskey bond sample. I'm almost up to date with all my packages and samples. If you're waiting on anything from me, give it a few more days. It's taken a long time for, especially if you're abroad, for things to get there right now. A wee bit more patience, you should get everything. If you feel like I've missed or forgotten something, please reach out. It can happen. Um, okay, let's ask another question for another sample of this. Mark at Whiskey Bond, uh, what I want you to do is I'll send you a sample, my friend, but nominate somebody else in the chat to get one too and tell me who that is. Um, something else, Aaron. In their Smuggler series, what is curious or fun or humorous about the packaging that it goes into? What kind of packaging does the Smuggler series use? Oh, I'm right on this. I'm just starting to second guess myself, but there we go. There we go. Daniel Vermas. Spot on. The Smuggler series is in a repurposed book type packaging. Take a wee screenshot there as well. But Daniel Vermas is first. Daniel, I'll send you a wee sample, my friend. And uh, if you nominate somebody else in the chat, uh, I'll get one sent out to them as well. So we can all do a wee bit of sharing. Well done, Daniel. Well done. A whiskey bond. See what you think of this. By the time it gets to you, it'll be opened up a wee bit. I think it might do well with a wee splash of water. Quite juicy. It's very orangey, though. That's the common theme I get with Aaron. It's funny to hear Billy Walker talking about that on Thursday night. He was talking about that you get orange and zesty orange and so, so many, many whiskies. Okay. I like to keep it a wee bit neat on these Sunday evenings, so I'd like to kind of uh, jump into the quiz. Am I up to date on everything? I talked about the patron-only stream on Tuesday, so if you're uh, looking for a wee quiet session, I'll lock in, um, and those those are much quieter as well. I'll see you guys, and thank you for your patience on Tuesday night. Um, Tomatin prizes. I was going to talk about World Whiskey Day. It was a good day. <laughs> I don't. I didn't want to do any events for World Whiskey Day. I just wanted to kind of spend time here, um, and I actually managed to pour a few drams for my wife. But they weren't whiskey. They were a uh, Pulteney Stroma liqueur, thirty-five percent. So it's it's a whiskey liqueur, but it's it's much closer to whiskey than a typical liqueur like Drambuie or Gleva. This was this was a nice liqueur. It's a liqueur that I. It's still a bit sweet for me but it was more whiskey forward. And she enjoyed a couple of those, uh, and I enjoyed a few World Whiskey drams. I hope you guys had a nice World Whiskey day too. But I wanna I want to just start up the quiz. Give me your thumbs, boys. Everybody that's 
in the in the background if you're good to jump in and participate on the quiz fantastic i've got a thumb from gregor i've got a thumb <laughs> and a 279 coin i've got a thumb from sid i've got a thumb from cody and i've got a thumb from chris how are you all are you comfortable superb yeah thank you for sitting in the background and listening to me haver <laughs> for a while another wee scots word said do you know what haver means yes I know it's in 500 miles by the proclaimers, but that's it. <laughs> ask, ask, ask Cody. Ask Cody what it means. Cody, do you know the word haver? Haver? No, I've never heard that one. <laughs> it's a Scots word, and to haver means that you just kind of continually speak nonsense. <laughs> you know, I'm surprised I didn't hear that. I, uh, I had a cool opportunity to hang out with the Brook Lottie team at um, the World Whiskey Forum just recently, and I learned all sorts of new words from those guys, so... Yes, that one never came up. <laughs> it's like it's like yeah. verbal verbal hovering. I think that would be the the link. <laughs> that's that's how to remember it. Haver. Yes, I, I am prone to a haver, and <laughs> I, I don't apologise for it ever. I think it's a good thing. Absolutely. Are you hanging about to participate in the quiz? This easy quiz that we have tonight. <laughs> yes. Excellent stuff. As I mentioned earlier on. Uh, the quiz questions tonight have been uh, donated by Rule Chisholm. That's Orange Rule. He's in tonight. I hope he's still in tonight. Um, it's fantastic. <laughs> if anybody gets 10 out of 10 on the quiz, they have the ability uh, to contribute questions. I'm not suggesting that I'll take the questions, copy and paste and use them, but I'll either, I'll either do that or I'll kind of uh, modify them a bit or use them as an inspiration for another question oftentimes. And it's very helpful for me to put together things. Um, you don't need to stay if you're not interested in the quiz. But if you've never tried it before, hang out for a wee while. You might have a bit of fun. You're not only playing against yourself. You're keeping your own score. You don't need to go public with it. I can, you can keep it to yourself. What I hope the quiz does is provoke curiosity in people to make them understand or pursue things a wee bit further in the future. Is that a haver, boys? Am I havering now? <laughs> <laughs> Excellent stuff. Okay. It's good to have company uh, to do this as well and to, to jump in and see how the boys score when they're live versus when they're, uh, they don't have any eyes on them. Good luck, everybody. Uh, multiple choice as always. Um, we'll want to question one. Good luck. Which animal featured on the Flora and Fauna release of Klein Leash? Which animal? Is it A, a caper Kelly, B, a red deer, or C, a wild cat? This is not my question. You can see from the wee icon down there, the wee orange rule, that this is from Rule. It's not from me. So if Rule gets 10 out of 10 tonight, it's nothing impressive. If he gets anything less than 10 out of 10, <laughs> he should be worried. Roy, can I check? Is it okay to check the chat or not? Uh, what, what do you normally do, Gregor? No, I just wing it. <laughs> I would I'd prefer you played it okay. yourself, but I don't want you just do what you normally do. And if you normally take the lead from the chat and that's where you're getting your great scores from, then continue doing the same. It's like a game of golf. Okay. You can't compare yourself to anything, anybody else but yourself the last time you played that course, I guess. Sid, you know this one, don't you? I've written C because of the, the, the 14, but I, I don't know that they did one of the same. Anybody else think anything different? I, I was going to go B, but it's You're clearly, it's red clearly wrong. It's clearly wrong. <laughs> okay. I can tell you that the unanimous answer from the chat is C for Wildcat. Mm. But that's the 14-year-old. If you've ever seen the cat on the 14-year-old, um, that's where they're getting that from. But yes, yeah. it was very much part oh. of it on the floor and phone as well. <laughs> I thought that was too obvious. I knew there's a cat on the clean leash, but I thought it was too obvious for the flora and fauna. You're looking for a banana skin too early. <sighs> <laughs> there may yet be one, Gregor. <laughs> so yeah, Scotch wildcat. It's, it's all to do with the Marcus of Sutherland. Yeah, that's quite a, a, a dark area in the Scotch history, uh, honestly. Um, he was invo involved in the Highland clearances and things, but uh, they choose to I pay tribute to his crest, and it is the Scottish wildcat. Question two. Typically, what would you find on a wash still, but not on a spirit still? Is it A, rummagers, B, descending line arms, or C, windows? 
I know that Rue will be looking at this. Um, <laughs> Rule's going, this isn't my question, this is my question. I have taken your question, but I've modified them a wee bit in certain cases, Rule. I hope you don't mind. Hope it's okay. And Whiskey Jason is saying, what's a caper kelly? A caper kelly is like a big black grouse-like ground bird. Uh, it doesn't do much flying, it can fly, uh, but they're uh, hunted occasionally. Uh, the males are black and white, big things. Females are brown. Uh, I guess I thought that Caper Kelly's were outside of Scotland. It's not exclusive to Scotland, is it, guys? Gregor, Chris? Uh, no idea. I'm not sure. But we both know what a Caper Kelly is, right? Well, I thought it was a type of caper from Italy. The crowd are a wee bit over the place on this one. The Western Caper Kelly. Oh, <laughs> McAllen Fine and Rare, the Doc, is on it already. Tetrao urogallis, also known as the wood grouse, heathercock, or just caper kelly. There you go, Doc. We want to know if it's uh, it must be outside of Scotland. It's not a, an only Scottish bird. And Jimmy Legacy, and I assume you're just making that up. You think I'm havering, Jimmy? But no. <laughs> what would you guess, Sid? A, B, or C? I've guessed C. And Chris? I've tried to work it out logically and put A, but it never worked in my other part. So. Anybody want to differ? Gregor, Cody? I went with C myself as well. Yeah, I went for C. Absolutely. Yes. C. Anybody that was listening to Billy Walker last week, they remember I'm talking about the extended fermentation gives him a calmer wash. So he sees that it's much easier to manage in the wash still. And that's the reason for those windows being in the wash still. We can see when things are getting quite angry and violent in there. But of course, uh, a much calmer, slower distillation um, in, the, in the spirit still means that you don't need windows in the spirit still. Rummagers are there when you have a nice glass, Gregor, thank you. Rummagers are there when you have uh, direct fire stills to, to save uh, solids uh, building up on the base of the still. And um, a descending line arm, well, that was absolutely a haver. <laughs> Question three, which of these space side distilleries sits furthest from the spay? A hard question, but I did drop a huge clue earlier. Is it A, Dalmunic, B, Tamdu, or C, Cardu? Which is furthest from the River Spey? It's kind of funny when we talk about Speyside and you see just how many distilleries um, are, are a wee bit further away from the Spey than you might imagine. This isn't far away. Hmm. I'd say it was maybe only about half a mile or so away from the Spey, I don't know. Which of these space side distilleries sits furthest away from the spay? Ooh. Ooh, this is splitting the crowd, definitely. Chris, are you confident? No. Nope. Cody, are you nope. guessing? Guessing, Sid? Guessing, Gregor? Yeah. 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 I okay. guess just by, dr I drove past it once and I thought, it can't be close to the spay then if I drove past it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can tell you that I did give a wee bit of a clue earlier when I talked about Imperial being demolished right on the banks of the Spey and being replaced by Delmonic. So it's not A, so it's either Tandu ah. or Cardu. And I can tell you that it's yes! C, Cardu. Second yes! I second guess myself. Wow. You see, that's how I feel when I know something, Gregor. That's, how, that's you <laughs> cheering when you, when you snipe a guess. <laughs> And Sunday evening, Scott just saying half a mile. What is this non-metric speak? <laughs> yeah, we're bilingual here, um, Michael. We're, bi we're bilingual. Okay, if you guess, if you chose C, sorry, uh, give yourself a point. A stewy babies and a half whiskey. Jason's on two out of three. Pete had and one out of three. Oh, a couple of hard ones already. And there you can see if I try to show you up here. Obviously, we've got Cardu up the hill. Down here, we've got Tamdu round about there. And then over here, we've got the site of where Imperial used to be and Dolmonic now. So I decided to put in a wee illustration there. In order to be called Scotch Whiskey, this is a, this, surely this is a giveaway. The spirit must mature in oak casks in Scotland for at least a 1,000 days, B, three years, or C, three years and one day. Listen, if you've been watching the VPUB for long enough and you get this wrong, you'll need to have a wee word with yourself. 
Can I? Can any of you hold their hands up and confidently tell me what it is? Well, I, until I saw C, yes. <laughs> right, I see so far. We sometimes even use time when asked how far away something is. Vicky Thompson is saying, oh, that's right, absolutely. <laughs> how, how, how far is Cardew from the spay? Oh, about two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. There's actually more people got this wrong than I uh, was prepared for. Mm. This is one of these uh, myths, absolute myths. The answer is absolutely three years. The three years in one day thing is just a nonsense. And I think people perhaps do it to avoid any kind of clerical administrative errors. Just give themselves an extra day should they be the type of producer that is thrown it into a bottle at exactly three years old, that is, of course. Um, but yes, the Scotch Whiskey Association regulations state simply three years. So B, obviously going to show you a, a very, very typical look of an old late 19th century, mid 19th century distillery and ask you, well, what are we looking at? I would not have got this, I have to be honest. Is it A, Mortlach, B, Glenrothes, or C, Royal Loch Nagar? Does anybody know this distillery, honestly? Any mm -hmm. confidence? Zero. After our low scores tonight, I'm very grateful that um, I'll be sharing the pain and the, the pushback that we sometimes get for hard quizzes with my friend Rule. Although he seems to be a wee bit annoyed at me that I've edited some of his questions, but I did. Uh, it was an attempt to kind of make them a wee bit more curious. Yes, exactly as I imagined. There's, there's guess what going on here as well. Dogs have no uncles is saying C, Graham Fraser, and Helen is also saying C, whereas Richard Hall thinks it's A, along with Alan McLaughlin. Good to have you in, Alan. Good to have you in, Richard. Uh, who else? Sillip Bang, Marcus Kreitner, Rob Gilmore. Now that looks like a new name, Rob. Nice to welcome you in, my friend. You're guessing that that is Mortlack as well. Any of you guys willing to take a guess at it? Hey. Hey. Sorry? B. You yeah, think Mortlack. Glenrothes? Mortlack. Oh. Mortlack. Glenrothes is uh, obviously um, more of a kind of... Uh, a hodgepodge type arrangement of buildings. I think Royal Loch Nagar is very manicured and um, lots of kind of landscape gardens and things. But that apparently is Mortlach, uh, one of the oldest, if not the oldest, of the Dufton distilleries. Roy, what, what's the best Mortlach for your money? Uh, probably an Indy. Okay. Try and get your hands on an Indy. If you can get it from a sherry cask, that's the most celebrated style. But I'm a sucker for Mortlach from a bourbon cask as well. <coughs> Question six, sitting on a shelf behind Ralphie and his bothy are two whiskey terriers. <laughs> what names has he given them? And it's he is in, as uh, Rule put that in inverted commas there, so perhaps it's the community that's named it. Uh, but he's actually got it written down there. Is it A, Fanny and Bobby, B, <laughs> Jack and Victor, or C, Blackie and Whitey? <laughs> Mm. Fanny and Bobby, Jack and Victor, <laughs> Blackie and Whitey. <laughs> now the Scots amongst us do get a kick out of this. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel Vermas is typing big fat A. And Jimmy Leg is saying A. Fanny is one of them. <laughs> ask ask Cody what a fanny is though. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, it's clearly in this context, context is everything, Gregor, and clearly in this context, it's a given name. <laughs> so let's roll with that. As I tell you for sure, as the crowd is quite rightly nailed, as Ralphie's uh, wee black and white terriers, his wee dogs are called Fanny and Bobby. Great fun, Ralphie, great fun. And you'll see them up in the background there. You can just about make out their name. Uh, Ralph, reviewing the Glenmorden G. Uh, I think that's the Keen to band there, is it? The 14-year-old. The new one, yeah. Question seven. Which unfor unfortunate distillery was destroyed by fire in 1877, then bombed in 1941, then suffered an explosion in 1959, and finally closed in 1983? Jesus, it was through it. A, Banff, B, Brora, C, Ben Wivis. 
Now, I'd have got this one, but um, uh-huh. only because I'd read about it quite recently for another reason. Change it online. I'd have been guessing. That's a clue. No, isn't he? Don't don't try don't try and read anything into what I'm saying. It's not a clue. <laughs> I think you're all guessed at this as well. This is a tough quiz, let's be honest. Yes. Ass hat. Yes. <laughs> Cody's <laughs> nodding. <laughs> But the knowledgeable barflies seem to know that I'm talking about poor Banff. Destroyed by fire, bombed, still explosion. It was a still house explosion. Um, nobody killed in that event and then closed in 1983. During the bombing, during the war, there was talk of blue rivers of fire flowing from the distillery and down into the waterways and ducks and farm art, farmyard animals being drunk for days. Don't know if there's any truth in it, but uh, that's the folklore that goes around that scenario. See, if, I, if, 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 if it was a brora, I thought you would know it, so you wouldn't have to research it, so... Ah, oh, yes, perhaps, perhaps. Did you get it right, Gregor, or not? I did. I'm, I'm, I might get my top score yet. Yeah. I'm five out of seven so far. Oh, wow, you're keeping it together. Well done. Stu Baby's saying... Um, that's the noise in Batman, not a distillery. <laughs> Bamf. <laughs> Fantastic story, well done. <laughs> and John Della Cuisine is saying that is quite the story. Absolutely, this poor Banff distillery. Question eight, which of these distilleries only features age-stated releases in its core range? Interesting question, is it A, Aaron, B, Balblair, or C, Kalila? This distillery in its core range only has age-stated releases. No, Gregor is searching the horizon. Sid looks comfortable. Cody's not sure. That's a good question. Chris, how are you feeling? No, I'm not sure. (laughs) Not sure either. I can tell you that the chat unanimously thinks it's Balblea. Anybody yeah. willing to go with the chat, or do you feel... I, I went with the chat, because you've had two A's in the back-to-back in the previous. It couldn't be Aaron. Don't pay any attention to the order. Or the, <laughs> all can see is it must be a B or an A. There's, I don't pay <laughs> attention to that whatsoever. I can tell you that it's B, Bal Blair. They have the 12, 15, 18, and 25, and their new releases. They moved from vintage to age statement a year or so ago. Yeah, and they have uh, only... Currently, they have only age data. They've got a 17-year-old as well, but I think that's a travel retail, I've noticed, out there in social media land. Question nine. An SMWS code structure for naming distilleries. Who is distillery number one? Who's number one in SMWS numbering system? Is it A, Bamor, B, Glenfarclas, C, Ochentoshin? Is it an Isla distillery in Bamor, Space Side distillery in Glenfarclas, or is it an Ochentoshin from the Lowlands? Shouldn't know that. I don't. Lindsay Holman is saying, if Aquaviti pays no attention, all the more reason to. <laughs> She's might be thinking that there's a subconscious thing going on there. I don't know. Definitely not. I have uh, I have thought about doing something, uh, but there's not many words you can make up from the letters A, B, and C to get a word. Certainly not a ten-letter word. <laughs> Guys, are you feeling confident about this one, or are you guessing? I think I've got this one. I think it's B. You think it's B, Sid? I can tell you that I have had the privilege of sipping from 1.1. Wow. Yes. Any good? It was an old and rare tasting. It was hosted by uh, Sukinder Singh, Charlie McLean. uh, I think Johnny from Berry Brothers was there as well. There's a few people there and they opened and poured a bottle of 1.1. It's quite amazing. The whiskey almost lived up to the momentous point in history that you were tasting. It was really good. Absolutely. It's B. Glenn Farkless. <sighs> oh. Who didn't say Glenn Farkless? Me. Oh, no. I've passed, though. I've passed. We're all good. You've passed. <laughs> yeah. Okay, last question. Are we uh, are we looking at a banana skin coming up? Let's see how this, the crowd is scoring. 
John Della Cuisine is saying he's a wee bit jealous of me. I, I know, John, it's, uh, that was a privilege. I didn't know that we were going to be getting that on the run-up to the tasting. It was quite an expensive tasting, as you can imagine. Stevie is on five. Alan McLaughlin's on nine out of nine. Alan tearing it up. Fantastic. Who's that on eight out of nine there? Who's on? Oh, caught somebody on eight. Vicky Thompson it is. Well done, Vicky. Any other nine out of nines? I'm scanning through. Scores aren't that bad at all. Peter Box is on eight out of nine. Well done, Peter. This is Daniel for Mass. Arnie Tiger on eight out of nine. Good to see you, Arnie. Wow. No other nines. Looks like uh, this could be based on question 10, Alan. Good luck, my friend. See how you get on with this. I have to be honest. If my memory serves me right, I think it's an ass hat. Let's see. Question 10. <laughs> it is. In terms of malt capacity, how big is Taninic? In terms of capacity, how big is it? Now you would think you're just going to see some liters here, but no, this is the quiz at the end. Is it A, greater than all of White and oh, the man. Is it B, <laughs> twice that of Angus Dundee? Or is it C, identical to Loch Lomond Group? How big is Taninic? Is it greater than White and Mackay? A, is it around twice that of Angus Dundee? B, or is it identical to Loch Lomond That's Group? ridiculous. Is that you? Did you write that? <laughs> this is my question. Yeah, you, you, get, you get the attack. And he's a nice guy. He would not give an <laughs> attack question into the quiz at the end. He would be looking to keep it fair and square. Oh, so man. It's me, the <laughs> Daniel Vermas, <laughs> is using an emoji that's not an Aquaviti emoji. I am tempted to make an asshat emoji, but not, it's not done yet. And John Della Cuisine has found a way to do exactly an asshat <laughs> configuration. <laughs> And Orange Will is saying, not my question. That is all, Aquavite. <laughs> no, I take full responsibility, Rule. Thank you, my friend. Thank you for your contribution. <laughs> so Michael, Sunday even Scott saying, what is this? Take a guess. Chris, go on. Take a punt. I'm going to go for C. Mm, I'd love to say. Me too. Cody? I'm going A. You're going for A greater than Olive White Mackay. Okay, I can say to all of you, your T's out. <laughs> B. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. Twice that of Angus Dundee. If you add Angus Dundee, it's about 9 or 10 million litres there. And Taninix, a theoretical maximum capacity is over 10 million litres, just a wee bit over. Uh, if you look at all of uh, White and Mackay, they're probably about 16, 17 million litres along all, of, all the distilleries. And Loch Lomond Group is about 6 million litres. And uh, she's saying, uh, Gregor's celebrating on a, what is that? Six. Six out of ten. I'll take that pass. Seven out of ten for Sid. Well done, Sid. Cody, oh, how yeah. did you go on, my friend? Six out of ten. Six out of ten, a pass mark. Superb, Chris? Six. Brilliant. Every one of you managed a pass mark. I'll just say thanks so much to Orange Will for contributing the questions tonight, Orange Will. I hope you don't mind me making a few edits here and there just to kind of switch it up and mix it up a wee bit. I wonder how Orange Will got on answering his the, the last question as well. I fully take responsibility for the last one, but I hope you understand and agree that it's okay to have a wee bit of fun. Guys, please hang about till the end and uh, I'll finish my dram alongside you guys. And thank you for participating tonight. Even if you see that I've killed the stream, hang on till the end and you'll stay in the background, guys. Thanks so much. I hope you had a wee bit of fun in the background. It's nice to have welcomed you all into a V-Pub. Cheers, Marfly. Cheers. 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 Wonderful stuff. Pass marks, it looks like. Alan McLaughlin is saying, you caught me out with the last question, Alan. Now I'm feeling it. Now I'm feeling it. Now I have guilt, honestly. Missed most of the first half as Doug was chasing a caper Kelly or Haggis out in the garden, so claiming a place. Great crack, says Willie Dolia. Thanks, Willie. I'm glad you're enjoying it regardless. That's the thing. It's fun. I know it's competitive. I know you're just trying to have a, a bit of fun with it. Helen Widdison is saying, great quiz. I agree, Helen. Thanks to Rule again. Pete Head is saying, where does Orange Rule live? <laughs> Might pay him a visit. <laughs> That's what you have to, if you, if you do contribute questions, especially when it's the majority or a full quiz like that, you do have to kind of put up uh, with the backlash. Eric Evans is saying, when you cover Scotch, often you recently had bourbon. Why not have an Irish V-Pub? I already know the guest you could have 
Donald Rance. You know, I've thought about, um, and a couple of years ago, when the VPUB was way back in its infancy, we did a kind of, um, we did a kind of Irish uh, thing for St. Patrick's Day or something like that. I think it was around that time. And I think it's a good idea. And it certainly helped me uh, understand Irish whiskey a bit more than I already do. Um, so it's a good idea. I would consider it, Eric. You never know. And Donald Rance, he's a good guy. There's a few guys that I know that understand and love Irish whiskey quite well. We had the guys from the Belfast Whiskey Club on with Jim uh, Whiskey Novice, Phil Cosu, of course, Whiskies, Paul and Alan McVeigh, um, all Irish guys. Uh, there's lots of people that we could reach out to in collaboration. Um, Graham Horner is saying, great quiz. I'm glad you enjoyed it, uh, Graham. Too slow is saying, thanks. Oh, you're very welcome, my friend. Gregor is saying, you deserve to wear an actual ass hat for that last one. <laughs> Stay baby saying Jack and Victor uh, would say pish. You need an emoji for that. Uh, Keno got as well saying uh, uh, I'm sure uh, one of the Teeling brothers would join in as well. You never know. That would be a good one. That could be good fun. Um, and uh, oh, that looks like a new name. Uh, Burkard, it looks like. Burkard saying, really enjoyed my first live stream. Cheers, Barflies. It's nice to welcome you in. It's nice to have you. Tell us where you are. Tell us what you've, you've got in your glass and maybe tell us if I'm pronouncing your name wrong. Nice to welcome you, my friend. Cheers. Belfast Whiskey Club is here. That's probably Paul. Another great night. Thank you. Enjoy the drams. Cheers, Paul. Thank you so much for your virtual drama, friend. It's nice to have you back. We've kept it neat tonight. Well under two hours. So I'm kind of paying back a wee bit of time that I stole off you on Thursday night in previous V-pubs when I run over the two-hour mark. I know a lot of you say that you don't really care, it doesn't matter. One of the reasons I like to keep it under two hours is that YouTube seems to process it almost straight away. If you slip over two hours, the processing takes a long time, and it's not a big deal, but it means that you don't have the live chat to follow if you're picking it up on the replay, and you perhaps lose a chunk at the start of the video, and things are just a bit odd on YouTube for a little while. But also I like to keep it to less than two hours because I think it's an appropriate chunk of time to ask from you all. I love these Sunday nights. I'm starting to really enjoy them. I don't care that we don't have the guests and I don't care that we don't have the themes and the structure that we do. I love having the contrast. I love having guests and things to talk about and focus on, but it's nice to switch it up. And if you remember way back from where the VPUB started, it was very much always about this. And I'm not going to continue to be able to bring constantly big ticket guests. This week, however, I do have a really interesting guest. I've got Julie Ann Fernandez coming in from uh, Distel. Uh, she's responsible for making whiskey. She's the master blender at Distel, uh, a very young age in her early 30s, I think, uh, Julie Ann is. Fantastic to hear how she arrived in that role, what her role is, what she enjoys about her role and what she sees uh, coming from uh, the whiskies that she's responsible, from Deanston, from Boonahaven, from Tobermory, which also obviously includes Lechik as well. Looking forward to welcoming in Julianne on Thursday. So it will be a structured VPUB. We won't be playing a game of Visit a Speyside. We'll be dedicating the time to the guest. Um, but then going on, going on uh, further than that, as we reach out into kind of Fischiel week, it's not happening this year, of course, and then into June, um, We'll kind of just measure how the VPUBs are going. If you're enjoying these twice weekly VPUBs, if you want to continue seeing them, please leave comments down below, not in the live stream, in the comments underneath. Uh, encourage it to happen. I'm getting lots of feedback from patrons. I listen to them. They're kind of my brain trust. They're my sounding board, especially when I'm doing this alone. I lean on them heavily. I love that to have them there. But it's nice to kind of ask the community general feedback. If you think it's too much, use these words. Graham Horner has bought me a dram saying, another great night, Roy. I'm uh, going to have to try and grab a bottle of Fingal's Cut ever since the lockdown. F have, to have to try and grab a bottle of Fingal's Cut ever since the lockdown festival. I don't think there were many of them. Um, it might be hard for you to get a hold of a bottle, uh, Graham, but good luck uh, trying. If you struggle to get a hold of one and you do want to try a dram, just reach out to me, buddy. I'd be more than happy to send a wee dram over to you. Cheers, Graham. Thanks for your dram. Orange Will is saying Sunday nights are great, <laughs> even when I butcher your questions, my friend. Thank you very much. Desi Vleeland is here. Thank you for another another lovely evening. Thank you so much, Desi. Uh, Jean de Cuisine is saying, every time spent in the V-Pub is a win in my book. Do you know, you're getting to know each other very, very well as well. I love seeing that. That is it's so, so encouraging 
to me because even when I'm not feeling it and I'm kind of feeling a wee bit doubting this whole thing and then I just see that you guys are hanging out with each other and I realise what it's actually achieving. So it doesn't matter if I come out with nonsense and ask that questions. It doesn't matter if you don't agree with my opinions or if I get things wrong. This is about folk getting together. It's a V pub. It's meant to mimic the dynamics of a real pub. And if we achieve a little bit of that, I think we're succeeding not bad. Thank you all so much for hanging out with me. Thank you, wonderful whiskey folk and dedicated barflies. I'm really looking forward to, to welcoming you on Thursday this week to sit down and hang out to hear all about uh, what Julianne uh, is bringing us from... Uh, I'm really curious because obviously people know how much of a fan of at least one of those distilleries I've listed I am. So it should be another interesting uh, night on the theme of whiskey makers. I'll raise this glass, I'll say patrons, I'll welcome you on Tuesday evening. And in the meantime, I'll welcome everyone else on Thursday. Please look after yourself. Please make canny decisions going forward. I love you all and thank you for hanging out with me on another extended opening of the V-Pub. Slanjibata. <laughs>